Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm super excited today to walk you through our brand new workflow testing feature. Workflow tests allow you to build more advanced tests for your backend that follow a specific flow that you need to make sure is working correctly for your backend to function. This could be a user flow, such as logging in and then viewing user specific data, or maybe it's just a certain flow that you need for some data processing that you need to make sure works as expected. In this video, we're gonna jump over to Xano. I'm gonna build a couple of example APIs and we'll walk you through actually building those workflow tests and show you how to use them. So here we are in our workspace. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to my APIs and I'm gonna create a new API endpoint and I'm just gonna call this math. We're just going to do some very basic math here. We're going to add an input and this is just going to be a number. And then we're going to create a variable. We're going to take that number and then we are going to add five to that number. So when we run this endpoint, let's provide a five for our input and the return is 10. Let's go ahead and publish that. And now let's say I want to test this and make sure that everything is working as expected. We can, of course, test it in run and debug, but we want to build this into a workflow test so we can make sure that when we're testing our entire backend, we know that this works along with everything else that we need to test. To get to our workflow tests, we'll head into our library here and we'll just go all the way down to workflow tests. This is the workflow tests screen. We have a couple of things here that I want to point out before we get started. Uh, we have the list of our workflow tests here. The last result will be shown here. We can run our workflow tests by using these play buttons here. We can click the settings icon to clone or delete a workflow test, and we can run all of our tests at the same time by clicking this run test suites button. Let's go ahead and add a workflow test for that math API. So we'll give it a name. You can also give it a description and add some tags for easier searchability. So in our new workflow test, uh, it's very straightforward. It's just like building a function stack anywhere else in Xano. We've added some additional functions to help you build your workflow tests. So let's go ahead and add a function here. The two new types of functions that we've added specifically for workflow tests are run stacks and test expressions. Run stacks allow you to run a specific type of function stack as part of your workflow test. So for us here, we want to run an API endpoint. We'll choose the API group that that endpoint is in, and then we'll choose that endpoint. We're given our list of inputs here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put five for my input and then we just have a return variable. We'll go ahead and call this math and we'll click save. Now the second type of functions that we've added for workflow tests are called test expressions. Test expressions are used to check the output of variables to make sure that they meet the conditions that you specify. So for this example, we have a ton of these here. All we're going to check is that is the variable that is output by this first function equal to 10. Let's save that. And now let's go ahead and run our test. And we can see we got a green check mark here, which means that this test was successful. We ran the API endpoint, which gave us a return of 10. And we checked to make sure that was the case with our test statement here. Let's go ahead and change the input on that run stack. And we'll go ahead and run this again. And we'll see here that we get an error that says that this test failed because the expected value 10 does not equal 15, which is what this function returned. Let's go ahead and fix our test. We'll change this back to five. We'll hit save. We'll run it one more time just to make sure that looks good. And we will go ahead and publish our workflow test. And so with just a few clicks, we have built a workflow test for our backend. Now, of course, workflow tests really shine when you use them to test an entire workflow and not just a single function. Single function tests are usually better delegated to our unit tests feature, which you can also access in your library here. But for a workflow test, it's designed to test multiple steps. So let's go ahead and add a couple more here. 
we're actually going to call our math endpoint again. And we know that this endpoint just adds five to whatever number we give it. Let's go ahead and provide 15 for our input. And now I'm going to add another expect function. And we're going to say that we want that variable to be equal to 20. So now we'll call the endpoint once and we'll provide an input of five and we're going to make sure that equals 10. Then we're going to call that endpoint again. We'll provide an input of 15 and make sure that that returns 20. Let's go ahead and run our test. Looks good. Again, just to kind of demonstrate what it looks like if a test fails, we'll go ahead and change that input. And we received an error, which makes sense because we're looking for a value of 20, but that function returned 155. And we could keep going with this as long as we want to, really. We could go ahead and run that endpoint a third time. Let's provide it an input of 10. And then we'll go ahead and add our test expression. And we'll say we want that to be equal to 15. There we go. Let's go ahead and fix this one here. And we'll run this one more time. And we get a success. So all three of these are doing exactly what we expect. Now, the really cool thing about workflow tests is you can, of course, run them all at once if you want to. We can, from this screen, just go ahead and run that single workflow test that we built earlier, and we get a successful result as expected. But let's go ahead and clone this. And we'll hop into this function stack. And let's go ahead and specify some different values. So we'll go ahead and provide 90 for this, which means we'll want to check for 95. We'll do 80, which means we want to check for 85. And then finally, we will do 70, which means we want to check for 75. And that should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and publish that. And now we can head back to our main workflow tests screen. Let's go ahead and run that test individually. Looks good. Now we can also run all of our tests at once. We'll give that just a second here. And we can see that we have a 100% success rate on all of the workflow tests that we have available. Now, another useful metric that this panel surfaces is coverage, which tells you how many of your total function stacks in your workspace have tests built for them. A couple of quick things to note before you dive into building workflow tests. You can change the data source that a workflow test uses by clicking this indicator here. You can also change that in the settings of the workflow test. If you have a function stack that you're testing in a workflow test and that function has a draft, so for example, if I go to my math API here, I'm actually going to change this and I'm going to tell it to start adding a hundred, which means that's going to break all of my workflow tests. It's important to know that when we run our tests, it will use the draft version of that function stack. So we want to make sure that when we have functions in draft, that our workflow tests also match whatever that draft function should be outputting. If you call an API that requires authentication, we have an API in our default group here that requires authentication. It is also important to note that your workflow tests will not check for valid authentication. So what that means is in this endpoint, for example, when we call that product API, it's just going to assume that we have authenticated successfully. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope this helps and we can't wait to see how you utilize workflow tests inside of your application. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. You can also reach out to us via support inside of Xano or on the Xano community. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.